Hi guys, it's Kelly and I am back again with another video sponsored by Simon Says Stamp. Today I'm going to be using a uh, stamp set from Clearly Besotted. This is called Bookworm and when I saw it in the store I was like that must be mine because I love books. <laughs> I'm a total book nerd. Um, I have been known to read whole books in one sitting. It, it's That's not abnormal for me. So I am working on, um, you may notice that it's not white cardstock, it's actually Nina Desert Storm. Now I have watched a hundred million people um, in the craft industry color on colored pencils on craft cardstock. I have tried this myself in the past and I never liked the results. So I thought maybe it was the paper and I think maybe it was the paper. So I wanted to try it. Here you can just see I'm kind of putting my scene together. I'm using that the masks that I have cut to line up my stamps where I want them to be. Since when you mask, you stamp front to back. So I need all of these little bookworms to be in the front of this bookshelf, but I need them to make sense how they're sitting on the bookshelf. So laying down those masks is just a really great way to have a placeholder to see where they need to go. Just out of habit, I think I probably could have used just regular black Simon to stamp ink. But because I'm so used to coloring with Copex, I automatically reach for that intense black, which is Copex safe. So that is what I use to stamp my images. And then I'm going to put those masks back in place. Um, they were cut with, what were they cut with? Um, Eclipse masking paper. Now I've got my bookshelf um, all ready to go. And I'm going to stamp that on top. Um, so that way when I remove the masks, which you'll see here in just a second, the bookworms will be on top of the bookshelf. This is the magic of masking and why I do it all the time because I think it's super cool. So I am going to use colored pencils today. I have a bunch of Prismacolor pencils and I have the handheld sharpener at the ready because everybody says that you are supposed to have super sharp pencils um, and they're right. <laughs> they are not leading you astray. Um, I recently took a class um, for colored pencils because I just didn't really feel comfortable with them and I was kind of a little bit sad that there was this beautiful coloring medium out there that I um, avoided because I wasn't comfortable with it so I, I took one class um, I have more in the hopper that I have not gotten to um, but it was it was very helpful so you're gonna hear me talk about a lot of um, things that are different than Copics uh, I want you to know that I really like the way that the card came out at the end. This is not just a video of me being like, and colored pencils don't do this, and Copics do this, and um, it's not a complaining video. It's just me telling you the differences that I noticed because um, I am typically more of a Copic colorer. So I'm assuming that you guys in the audience may also be more Copic colorers, or you're just here because you saw that... Um, Chalama video which completely blew up and I did not even know that was going to happen. Anywho, back to the coloring. So um, basically what you want to do is you can see how far back I'm holding that pencil and it's because you want to have a really light hand. Uh, you're building up the color um, so you don't want to go in and just put down dark pigment. If you push down the tooth of the paper by pressing really hard right in the beginning, it will not allow you to build up any intensity. So I make sure that I hold the pencil really far back because I have a tendency to want to put down a lot of pressure. You know you're putting down too, pressure, too much pressure if you have been coloring for like five minutes and your hand hurts. If your hand hurts, which mine always did, if your hand hurts when you are coloring, you are gripping that pencil and pushing way down way too tight. So ease your hand back and let it be a little bit loose. For the shading, I'm doing it just like I would with Copics, except I'm covering the whole thing in my lightest color. Then I added my little mid-tone. So I am coloring as if my light source is in the top right-hand corner, leaving the highlights on that right-hand side. Then you're going to go in with your darkest color back to your mid-tone, back to your lightest color, because you're just constantly building up that pigment to make it opaque, um, which looks awesome. Like, these little bookworms just look like they're glowing, and I love it. I love the way that it looked. It did take, um, it took a long time. It took a very, very long time. So here in a minute after I cover, cover, I'm not covering it, he's not cold, after I color this one bookworm, I am going to speed up the coloring process because otherwise we will be here until your grandchildren's grandchildren are in college and you'll just be sitting there forever and you have things to do. I know you do. 
So the last thing that I did was just going with the white um, colored pencil, which is great for blending. And I just added in um, just a little bit of some areas that were going to be lighter. Uh, the other thing I wanted to note is I kept a old paintbrush like just on the side to kind of like sweep off the extra colored, the colored pencil dust. I guess it's dust. Um, but I found it really hard not to do it with my hand. Don't do it with your hand because I like smeared, especially with this particular, um, the little hat right here. I smeared like pink halfway across my card because I just am used to doing it with my hand from when I'm like sketching or anything else you're doing in life. Like if you're writing with pencil and you erase it, you wipe it with your hand. It's just have it. Um, but try, I just did it. You saw me. Um, don't, try not to do that because it kind of smears that, that dust around and like grinds it into the background of your card. Um, I'm not using white paper here, so it wasn't that noticeable. One of the other things that I noticed um, with the coloring is it's kind of hard to get a lot of pigment into the edges um, because we don't typically focus on the edges. We tend to go more over the middle, you know, more times. Um, so I really had to make sure that I paid attention to getting the, the coloring all the way out to the edge so that I was getting um, the, the buildup of pigment everywhere. And it was really apparent with this apple because I'm like, why does this look funny? Oh, color your edges. That would be helpful. Um, so that was another thing that I noticed. These uh, pencils color, uh, Prisma color pencils. Why can I not speak today? What? Prisma color pencils are wax based. So as you're building up that pigment, it is getting kind of like a sheen, a, a shine on it. Um, and it is also, it was kind of hard, it was kind of difficult for me to see to color because as I was building up the pigment, the lighting that I use for the video uh, catch, kept catching the images. And so it was kind of difficult for me to see what I was doing. Um, but it turned out all right. I mean, I guess I got it all the colors where it was supposed to go. So that's another thing that you want to um, just be aware of. It's going to, that waxy sheen is going to dull those black lines um, just because it's going to build up on top of them. There is a way around that later on. We'll get to that, how I went around it, because you know I was not just going to sacrifice my bold black lines. Um, so for this little business shirt here, I decided to go white. I did add a little bit of minimal shading with some blue. I opted to make all of the... Um, accessories pink because I thought that it looked really cute with that neon green um, so I just went with that and then um, yeah so basically I'm just doing the same thing over and over again like you you can see this here I'm just coloring lightest color all of it adding shading with the um, medium color adding shading with the dark going back to the medium going back to the light now a long long time ago my friend Lydia Fielder um, she had put this koi fish up on Instagram and that thing was glowing. I mean, it was glowing from the inside. It was amazing. And so when I was face to face with her, I was like, hey, yo, teach me how to color this glowy fish. I want my fishes to glow. Like, don't, don't be selfish. Don't keep the glow to yourself. Teach me how to do the glow. Um, and so she tried. <laughs> she tried to teach me how to do the glow, and the way that she did it was she did like a layer of white, then a layer of color, then a layer of, like there was a layer of white in between everything, and that thing was glowy as all get out. Um, but I was like, dude, this takes too long. Like, I can't even. I can't. Uh, one thing to note with this blue, the lightest color blue I did end up having to switch out, which is brings me to my other point of the card pencils that I had a hard time with, which was it was kind of hard to figure out... Um, how dark the colors were going to be because it looked like when I scribbled it on the piece of paper that it was going to be a relatively bright blue but then when I was trying to blend it with the darker blues it was a no-go guys it, it was not working so I had to find another one that was a little bit brighter anyway back to Lydia I was like Lydia this takes forever I don't even know how you sat there and colored this fish this one fish like 200 times like color white color white color white oh my lord um and she was like, it cannot possibly take any longer than your Copic markers do. And I will tell you, that is, that is not true. The Copics are way faster. But it's probably because also of my comfort level. So maybe colored pencils will get faster. I don't even really know. Here I am pointing out to you that um, because of the masking, because I masked his glasses, 
I cut off the lines from the books behind him. His glasses are not opaque. You would be able to see through them. So I'm just going to take a T-square ruler. Um, and with the help of my little fine baby hairs, you can see at the bottom of this camera shot, I'm going to draw them back in and then continue my coloring. The One of the things I wanted to try was, I didn't like this red. Didn't love it. Which is not shocking because I don't really like red in real life. Um, but it was just like too bold and I didn't feel like it fit. Not that any of them fit because I kind of just picked a menagerie of colors. But um, I wanted to see if I could change the color like I could with my Copics. So I picked purple. Same purple as I colored the book that's underneath uh, the middle bookworm. And I went in there and started adding some shading with the purple. Now obviously I can't get the red up. Like with Copics you can use the colorless blender. I mean, I guess maybe I could have tried to erase it, but honestly, I was terrified I would just smear right all over this whole thing, and then what would I do? What would I do with that then? I mean, I'm already invested. So I decided to just do the purples, and it did um, it did change it to a more purple hue. It obviously did not get rid of the red, but it changed it enough that I was happy with the way that it looked um, in the scene. And then we're moving on to the bookshelf to go ahead and color that. Um, but yeah, so anyway, it does take a lot longer than Copics for me. I don't know if there's just maybe a little bit of a learning curve. Uh, you do want to make sure your pencils are sharp. And the reason is um, you want to make sure that you can get into those teeny tiny areas without like smearing color around. So it was kind of important. I didn't sharpen um, maybe as much as I should have because it was time consuming. Like I don't want to keep sharpening. I just wanted to color. That's, that's, I didn't want to have to break and sharpen. Though, if my son was here, he would have just been like, he's the sharpening dude. Like, that's his thing. He's like, can I sharpen this one? Can I sharpen this one? And I gotta be honest, I'm a little terrified because prismas are kind of delicate. If you drop them and they break the lead inside, then you're, you're in trouble because you're never going to be able to fix it. You're not going to be able to put it back together again. But I do try to let him help where I can. So after the bookshelf was all um, colored and I was happy with the way that looked, I went back in with that white pencil. And I just wanted to add a little bit of shading to their glasses because they are transparent. Like you can see people's faces through their glasses. I'm sure you probably noticed while you're out in public looking at people. Um, but I didn't want it to just be nothing in the, the background. So that's why I added the white. So I, on the part that it's craft, you can see it a little bit better. And then I'm just going to add some ground so that they don't look like they're just on a magic floating bookshelf. Though, if there is such a thing as a magic floating bookshelf, I would be the first one to be on that because I love the books. So after I put down just a little bit of brown, um, I'm blending it out with the white because I thought, oh, well, that'll be good. You know, it'll be nice and, and neutral, except um, I'm not working on white cardstock. This isn't disappearing into the cardstock. It's making the card, it, it's making it white. Duh, Kelly. <laughs> um, so I just went back in and added just a little bit of a darker shadow, especially right underneath the bookshelf. I thought that it would be darker. And then where the worm on the right hand side is kind of like tucked up underneath, that I thought that would be a little bit darker. The other test I wanted to do was the gel pen test because I like to add um, details with my white gel pen. I did not really have any issues with the white gel pen. Um, and then I also used it to just add little like streaky lines over their, their glasses so that it would look like it had some shine. This is going to be null and void in a minute. So here is where I did take the time to sharpen my pencil. And the reason I did is because I'm going to, you cannot, I cannot use my Copic Multiliners, the EK Success pen over these images to get a bold black outline. It won't work over the wax. I don't know what it is, but they, they are not friends. So when I had to outline, I had to do it with the black colored pencil, which worked totally fine, but the, the tip of it gets worn down, so it's not as sharp. And when that happens, your nib becomes wider, so your lines get wider. So you just if you're going to outline it, you just need to be aware that you have a really sharp tip. So I did get a mildly like, I gotta sharpen it again. Um, but I had to because otherwise I would just have these big uneven lines. So they have a bunch of totally adorable sentiments in this set. I chose the um, Get Lost in a Good Book, but there's super, there's one that says I like big books and I cannot lie. Like, um, yeah, hello, I love big books and I cannot lie. And also I love the reference to the song. 
put some glossy accents on their little eyeglasses, and then I called it. So I was actually really pleased with the way that it came out. I am not going to um, put all of the colors in the video. They will be linked below on YouTube as well as on my blog. I'll have them all listed out if you're interested in what I used. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.